and there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's a value of 29, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right? And I think there's 35 total data points there? 35, yes. So to find the percentile, it should be, and again, the percentile is the percentage of the data that's below your data value. So what percentage of the data is below 29? It's the 66. There's six data values, but what percentage of the data is that then? Six data values out of? About 25. Exactly. Cool. Okay, but that's my question. Where did you get the six from? Where did you get the six from? You told it to me just no, now. No, it's, it's right here. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm reading it. <laughs> there are six data values before the number 29. And what's the percentile say? It's the percentage of the data that's below your data point. Right. So what? No, how many data values are below 29? Yeah, there's uh, 20, 27, 6.55, and 4.5. So there's six data points. you got to convert that into a percentage now. And a percentage is always part divided by whole. Six data values out of 35 data values. Cool. And of course, the multiplication by 100 is just making it into a percentage, right? That's related to moving the decimal over. So if you look at the formula in the book for finding a percentage, they'll have like k divided by 100 times n. This is just converting it to a decimal. And then, of course, of means multiply. So I take a percentage of how long my list is. Who was asking for the notebook, by the way? Because I did. Okay. I just forgot that he had it. This one, huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, on three, four, uh, question number four, it says question about the variance and how you um, would tell what the two box The variation. Oh, yeah, the variation. Oh, yeah. So they make this one kind of nice because some of the variation involves with how big the box is too in the middle not just the range but how spread out is the box but in this case there is one that has a smaller range and a smaller middle box right mm -hmm. so that one should have less or more variation than the other one so the one that has less range so they have two if you have less range, you have less variation. Yeah, they have one that's like this and you have another one that's like this which one has less variation? The first one, yeah. So they can make that problem really evil by having one that has almost the same range as the middle box is a little bigger or smaller. The, the, the one that's tighter into the center is the one that has less variation. Yeah, and it does. And thankfully, this one has both less range and smaller well, middle box. It had a uh, bigger variation, but the sizes are a lot closer. And then the top one was... Oh, yeah, one of the whiskers is closer? Yeah. Well, that's okay. You really just look at the range and the size of the middle box. Cool. Right. And that'll be kind of a giveaway. Cool. Yeah. So you say variation is similar to standard deviation? That that's way? really what they're talking about. When they say the word variation, we can look at that as standard deviation is a measure of that. Cool. Yeah. Number two on three, four. So number two is the one about heights of presidents. Oh, right? The one about President Kennedy? Um, officially, and, and you can see this mathematically, if, if I have, uh, yeah, let's say the average height, oh, I don't know, in centimeters, shit, let's we'll see, uh, 60, 254, so it would be uh, 100, let's say 150 centimeters is like the average height of somebody. Um, and the standard deviation, let's say, is, I'll just make something up, Jeff, seven centimeters. Sounds good. And if you make a z-score, like if I say, okay, I'm 140 centimeters, what's my z-score going to be then? Can somebody help me out there? What would that formula be? <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what's my x in this case? 140. And actually, I was really nice there. But the x is the data value I'm curious about. It's not the standard deviation. It's not the mean. They each have their own place to go. It must be the data value they're talking about. So I'm talking about 140 minus. In fact, let me put the units in here. You don't have to do this, but just to make a point. Over a standard deviation, I'm using different symbols, but it's too bad for me. There you go. Seven centimeters. So what do you get on the top? 
Negative 10 centimeters divided by 7 centimeters. What happens to the centimeters? Ah, uh, unitless. No units, right? In fact, they kind of have units. The, the units would be numbers of standard deviations. But really, mathematically, they have no units. We interpret it the way we want to, but the units cancel out. So a z-score has no units. What does a z-score tell you again? What? The number of standard deviations from the data point to the mean, or you know, from the mean to the data point. I don't care. Cool. What did you get five from? Well, oh, that's S. Mind, that's that, no, that's S, yeah. That's my S. My poor S looks like my five. I know. Any other Sorry. questions? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Um, the weird thing about that problem. God bless you. Bless God bless you. Let me do a problem like that one. Uh, let's say in this class the average on a test was 80 and the standard deviation was 3. So that's uh, your stats class. And then your, I don't know, your biology class, the mean was a 72 and the standard deviation was a, uh, was a what, Jeff? I don't know. Was a 8. <laughs> trying to think about making this come out through. So let's say in this class you got a grade of 74 and in this class your grade was uh, 65. Now on the face of it you'd say you did worse in which class? Bio. Just look at the grades. Bio. You did worse bio. in bio. What the z-score tries to do is say relative to everybody else, how did you do? So we all know that there are some classes where the teachers just never give A's, ever. They just, you know, so if you get like a 70, you're like, oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had that happen yet. I've been in several classes where I'm like really happy to get a 60-something. Yeah. Anybody else, you got a 60, you suck. Yeah, I know I'm awesome. <laughs> so but this kind of points to that fact. If somebody routinely grades harshly, you'd really rather know your Z-score. Because in the end, they're probably going to curve anyway, especially if you go to grad school, anybody? Curving is the rule of the game. You can't go by what you get. You get 10 out of 40, that's a good job. Because in the end, you're going to get an A. They're going to curve the hell out of that shit. <laughs> so what's the Z-score for this? Two. So 74 minus 80 divided by 3 is negative 2. What's the Z-score for this one? Over 8. So negative 7 divided by 8. Negative uh, point, uh, eight seven five. Yay. So relatively, which one did you do better in? Bio. Bio, Bio. right? So you, obviously, this is saying like, uh, this is sort of related to why SATs use percentiles, because percentiles are relative measures, right? They're relative measures. It's more fair. You can't say to your friend, oh, I made a 74 in my stats class, and you're like, well, I only made a 65 in my bio. You actually did relatively better than they did. Because that test was obviously harder for more people than this one was, right? Okay, maybe. Now the problem you have, they're really close. But if I get a negative two and the other one's a negative 1.9, 1 which one is better? 1.9 1. 1. in that case, right? Because it's less negative. You didn't score as below the mean as the other one did. So the one in the homework, they actually come out really close, but you just take the one that's less negative. That's why the de that's why the title of that section is uh, relative measures, right? I remember exactly. Oh, measures of relative standing. Relative measures. So they want to say relative to the entire group. How did you do? That's the more important thing, actually. Cool. Maybe. All right. Any other questions from homework? <coughs> What's that? I did have one from four. Four point two. Four two? Four two? Yes. Cool, man. No, it's not cool because I, I, I didn't. No, it's cool that you're into it. <laughs> no, so, <I> hey. <laughs>
I'm not saying it's cool. You didn't understand it. Oh, you didn't understand it? That's so cool. <laughs> I had a question, though, because I got stuck um, on number 24. Because you said every other three, right? Every third one? Okay. Every third one. So 24 so sounds like 24. somewhere you should end up. So we can actually do this problem now. Everybody look at number 24. This is page 149. We could do this even with the limited amount we talked about probability last time. What's your guess? It actually isn't perfectly this, but what's your guess the probability that a girl is born versus a boy being born? What's your guess those probabilities? 50-50. In, in reality, it's not 50-50 because nature tries to uh, account for the fact that men die earlier, right? So it's actually, I think if I remember correctly, probably a man being born is a little higher. Because nature said, holy crap, I'm losing some men. I better put some men, more men out there. Somehow it's able to do that. It's kind of cool. Um, but let's just go 50-50. Right? It's close enough. Uh, so this one says 726 births consisted of 668 girls. And the rest are boys. 58 boys. Now this is after they use some method where they're trying to say, they're trying to, um, if you want a girl, they say come here and take, and we'll do something so that you will almost definitely have a girl, right? So the question here is, can they have a commercial? And this is true. Can they see on the commercial, it's been clinically proven to increase your chances of having a girl? Yeah. According to well, it, it normally it's 50%. What exactly would the probability of having a girl be now? The probability of a girl. Cool. 668, 668 out of 726. Out of 726. And whatever the hell that is. 92? Yeah. Roughly. So 92 about. So 92 percent chance. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. Right? I'd say that's way far away. So even though we still don't have an exact science for what far enough away is, from 50 to 92 percent with a relatively large sample size. That's statistically significant. Mm -hmm. I can go on TV then and say, hey, everybody. <laughs> this will improve your chances. If you don't want them boys, come over here. <laughs> right? OK. And I had one you want to screw with nature? Come to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I had one more. Um, two. I mean, I answered it, but I, I wasn't positive exactly. Oh, I like it. OK. Let's, this is the one uh, I want to kind of, I don't want to write this anymore on, on the homework on that problem. Number two says the probability of a Republican president, and I know there's hundreds of parties. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. There are hundreds of parties, each with their own candidate for president. We normally hear of at most three, right? Republican, Democrat, and then the other party of the day. <laughs> be it the Green Party, be it uh, Independent, whatever, right? I want to see a resurgence of the Whigs, actually. <laughs> um, but let me give you an example before I actually ask you the question of the book. What's the probability it's going to snow today in San Diego? Zero. I would say zero. basically zero. It's not exactly zero, believe it or not. You never know when some freak yeah. meteorite will tilt the earth and then snow. <laughs> but um, whenever somebody answers this question saying, oh, yeah, 50% chance of a Republican candidate because there's two choices, Republican or Democrat. That's exactly the same as saying, oh, yeah, 50% chance of snow today because there's two choices, snow or not snow. <laughs> Do you see how silly that is? Yeah. But when you read that problem, you, you get stuck in the idea of, well, Jeff said, it's uh, the total chances, and on top is the number of things that match what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And that officially is it when everything's equally likely. Are these equally likely? Yeah. No, it depends, right? Well, I have an answer. I put the uh, if. If there's only two parties for the presidency, then uh, it is a, a probability that that both parties have a 50 percent nope. chance of winning. Well, we know that's not true. Well, I'm saying, but if you put the if on it, wouldn't that ma make a difference? Mm, if, no, if no, 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 that no. There is. They're saying there's only two parties. Right. So they're saying, given that there's only two parties, really, that really have a chance at it. Since there's only two parties, they each have that a half chance. chance. That is okay. not true. It's the same as saying there's only two things that can happen today. It can snow or it won't snow. Does anybody disagree with that statement? No. 
There are only two things that will happen. Don't say, well, it might rain. It might not. No, that's in not snow, isn't it? I've already taken it into account. So it can snow or it can not snow. Does that mean they're both 50% chance? That's silly. They're not equally likely. Obviously, the no snow is more likely, much more likely, right? So that's what they're getting at here. And the last election, I don't care how hopeful you were if you're a Republican, you pretty much knew there's no chance that the Republicans going to win, right? I don't care how much you watched it, there was no chance. And, and it was all because of the atmosphere. And, and, and right now, Democrats are hated. So now the Republicans' probabilities have gone up more than they were before, right? So it, all, it depends on all these other factors. The problems we've been doing so far, we only did a few, is if I put stuff in a hat, then everything's equally likely, really. If I mix it all up, isn't everything equally likely? Mm -hmm. Right? Because they all have an equal chance to get on top, or you're going to mush around in there anyway. They're all equally likely. Here, are they equally likely? No. So you have so to I assume can't that. that there's not only two parties, is what you're saying? No. I'm saying there's two parties. That doesn't mean it's a 50% chance. Right? One has a better chance than the other, depending on the situation. Just because there's two doesn't mean you're definitely having a 50% chance of one or the other. Just like I just said, there's snow or not snow. Does that mean they're both 50% chance? Of course not. One is more likely than the other one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, four to number four. I, I had no idea how to go about that one. I was asking. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, again, we just barely got in the four two, so I wasn't. There's some, some stuff i got to talk about. Subjective probability is if I asked you, uh, what's the probability that you're going to be fired? Right? And you go based on your experiences. If you've just been fired from five jobs in a row, you're going to go, I'm definitely going to go, I'm just waiting for the day, man. I'm going to come up with something I did. Right? Or if you've never been fired in your life, you're like, well, I've seen that on shows. So that's why it's called subjective probability. It's based on our own subjective sense of what's going on. It's based on our own experiences. So if you've never, and you live in San Diego, so I can't believe this, but if you've never um, been in a car that was delayed because of a car crash, then your subjective responses could be very low. Whereas if just this morning there was a car crash, you're like, well, crap, man, it's, that just happened to me. It's going to be high. Right? So it's happened to me several damn times. You're on the road, and sometimes it crashes on the other side, and this side is freaking slow because they're all like, what's going on over there? <laughs> no, I don't care. Leave them alone. So what do you do? Do you just like average out how many times you drive or get in your car a day? You don't even have to do any math. You oh, just give me answer. something, and then you might say, because it's not going to happen very often or because it's happened a lot to me. Right? Okay, I thought they were wanting a number. So They, they do want a number, number, but it's going to be totally subjective, and subjective okay. means... No, little to no calculations involved. It's just based on a good guess, right? Okay, so that's what, what that was another thing. Too. So if you say ninety percent, that's a little crazy. I'm like, where do you live? I don't want to go there ever. People are crazy there. So for each of those, you have to give give a, a, a you actually have to have numbers. Yes, exactly. Okay. Estimate the probability that the next time you ride in a car, you will not be delayed. Well, actually, here I'm sorry, you will not be delayed. That ninety percent would make sense. 10% chance you won't be delayed. That still makes, I don't know, but that, does that make sense? That means a 90% chance you will be delayed. No, it doesn't happen that often, right? But it does happen. So I need to see that evident in your answer. Is that cool? So subjective probability, there's only one problem about it in the book because it's not something we use often because you, other people will discount you. It really only has personal meaning, right? Yeah, sorry. Cut somebody out. Yeah, you got can it? Can I okay. ask one more? Sure. On, on six, which is the weather bug forecast for the upper zone. Okay. Stating as chance of rain 80%. So would that be P80? No, no, no. Well, if it says chance of rain 80%, how can I write this in this format here? Oh, um, P80. Probability of, of rain. rain. Oh, gotcha. So probability is really just taking the word, place gotcha. of the word chance. Gotcha. Gotcha. Equals 80. 0.8. Yeah. 80% is fine, but in this problem they say between a, n a number between 0 and 1. So they mean make the, des the percentage into a decimal. Gotcha. Okay. So what's the highest the probability can be? 
100% or 1 as a decimal, right? Is that cool? You can't go above that because 100% means it's definitely going to happen. What would 110% mean then? It's nothing unless you're in football. Huh? 110%. <laughs> What's it mean? I don't know what it means. So you can't go above 100% or 1. You can't go below 0. 0 means it ain't going to happen. What would a negative percentage mean? It's so not going to happen, the opposite is going to happen. I don't know what that means. That has no meaning. Okay. Cool. So let, let me, um, we need to finish out a few ideas from chapter 4. But you can see how I think most of you guys already know enough about probability to make it through this section. Um, without me talking too much more about it, but let me fill in a few gaps here. Let me see where I left off. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I like it. Cool. Um, <coughs> so let me, let me give two different situations here. Let's say I flip a coin uh, ten times. And I get six heads, four tails. From what I've observed, what's the probability of getting a head? I love it, right? So from what I've observed, so this is one type of probability based on observations. And this is obviously the one we use very often in statistics, because what we do is we take observations. We, we take a sample and we look. So this would be 6 out of 10, 60%. So this is one type of probability. This is the type based on observations. I call it empirical probability. So just in case I say that, and we've already seen this word before, haven't we? Empirical rule, right? Empirical probability. Empirical really means based on observations. Uh, the book calls it the relative frequency probability. Can you see why? How frequently did heads happen? Six. And how do you make a relative frequency? Divided by the total. Divided by ten. So that's why they call it the relative frequency approach. How are we doing so far? Yeah. Why it's a what? Empirical, empirical. That word, you see that word very often associated with science classes. Because it's empirical really means based on observations. And to tell you honestly, that's where the empirical rule came from. They observed millions of normal distributions and said, holy shit, this is always happening. There you go. Let's make a rule out of this, right? So that's what that means. The book calls it relative frequency approach. Now, tell me theoretically, theoretical or what the book calls classical, I think. Eh. Stupid. No, no. The theoretical approach. Do I actually make any observations when I do something theoretically? Yeah. No, I don't do a damn thing, right? So what would the probability of a head be theoretically? 50%. 50%. 0. 0.5. Cool. And when you're doing your homework in this section, you can leave your answer as a decimal or a percentage. That's cool. Show me some work that leads up to it, though. Right? Show me a fraction if you have to divide something by something. Show me the work. Why are these two different? And they're equally likely, supposedly, right? Supposedly. So theoretically is based on a perfect world where they are the equally likely. Even if they are equally likely, will I always get exactly five heads and five tails every time I flip it ten times? No. Right? If you get six heads, would you go, oh my god, it's a magic coin. <laughs> right? What if you got ten heads and no tails? You still wouldn't go, you might go like, well, that was weird. But you're not going to go, oh my god. If you flipped it a thousand times, let's take this to the extreme. Flip a coin, you can spell the word coin. A thousand times, and you get 999 heads and one tail. First off, get alive. What are you doing flipping a coin? <laughs> but secondly, what would you think? Would you be freaked out? Would you think that something's wrong with that coin? Or something's been tampered with. Is that impossible? No. no. But this is getting to the point we made earlier. That is statistically 
significantly far enough away from what I expect, right? And the really cool thing is the connection between these two and tr what a probability really is, people always get confused about this. The connection between these two is the more I do this, the closer the answer should get to this. That's really what we're saying there, right? If you do it a thousand times, it better be close to how many heads? 500, because 50% of a thousand <laughs> is 500. So if you get 490 heads, you're like, all right, that's cool. If you get 460 heads, you're like, all right, still okay. So later in the book, we're gonna say, well, how many heads would be freaky then? How many heads would be evidence that something's been tampered with on that point? So that's in our future, right? So the connection here, this is kind of cool. The name of this is the law of large numbers. I'm not making that up. Let's see if they put that in there. Oh, well, I don't know if they put that in there or not. No. Too bad for us. But that doesn't make sense. That's the whole idea of the law of averages, right? Eventually, it's going to average out. If you hit a bunch of red lights, you should start hitting some green lights so it averages out, something like that. Of course, Murphy's law kind of trumps the law of averages sometimes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Subjective probability, I'm not going to talk too much more about than I already did. That's the third type that we're not going to do too much with because it's totally only relevant for the person based on their experiences. It's not really relevant for others, right? Very often. Sometimes the weather is seen as subjective. 20% chance of rain today based on what they saw. It's not exactly 20, it's just their best guess given what they see. Okay. So, let me give you an example of a problem that I like to do. Left-handers, do I have in here? Cool. All right, do send them out. So let's do this. Uh, let's make a little table. Men, women, lefty, and I'll call it not lefty. See that little bar above that? And probability that means not. Kind of sucks that we have a bar for the mean. I know it sucks, but this would be not lefty. This is left. Cool. So let me get that from you guys. Can you guys see how to fill this in? What do I need to ask first, maybe, to start filling this in? Oh, All right, so how many men are left handed? Raise your hand again. I know I had more than that. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Three left handed men. Uh, how many women are left handed? One, two, three, four. All right, now here's the exciting part. How many men do I have in the room? Let's see. One, two. Oh, I like that. You don't have to raise your hand. I, I, thankfully, I can tell. One, two, three, four. I appreciate that. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen. So there's 19 total men, which means how many not left-handed? 11. And then women, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So how many not left-handed women? 22. How many total left-handers? Seven. How many total not left-handers? 38, cool. So how many total people in the room? 45. Good, 45. Don't say 90. You see where somebody might get 90 from? They'll add these and they'll add those. Didn't they add everybody twice then? <laughs> That's actually going to come up again later, the idea of not counting people twice. So it's 45 total people. Okay, so the kind of questions I would ask you, I can now ask you all kinds of probability questions, right? can say, what's the probability that if I pick somebody random from the room, I get 
Uh, left handed. Seven. Seven. Beautiful. Seven left handers out of 45 people. Now, the reason I can do that again, just to make sure everybody understands, is if I truly randomly select somebody, what's true about everybody's chances to get in? Equally. Equally likely. So therefore, I can do that definition. I can just put how many match what I look for divided by the total. Because everybody has an equal chance to be selected. 745, somebody help me. What's that? 745. 15.5. And I think the percentage of left-handers in the U.S. the last time I looked was like 11%. Maybe it's gone up a little bit. All right, so we're, we're close, aren't we? So if I had 40% left-handers, that would kind of, I'd go, why would that be? That's not what I expect to see, right? It's actually 15.6. Say again? 15.6. 15.6? Yes. All right, thanks. No, she's not. Um, something else I could ask you. So obviously I could ask you probably picking a man, probably picking a, anything. Let me ask you a little more interesting question. Let's probably pick up somebody who's a man and left-handed. Beautiful, right? The bottom is going to be 45 as long as it could be anybody. This confuses people, though. Sometimes they put on the bottom... They'll put 19 on the bottom. So that. But the bottom should still be 45. I don't know anything about the person. What's the probability it's a man and left-handed? And do you see how this is cool? Man, left-handed, where do they meet? Three. Now here's where it gets weird. A little bit. What's the probability I pick somebody who's a woman or not left-handed? So it could be a woman, or it could be somebody who is not left-handed. Now that would be, now 22 would be what? It's a woman and they're left-handed. So that would be a probability of a woman, period. So who do I have to include? What groups do I have to include in my counting? All men and men. All women. And all not left-handers. Now, if I do that blindly, let me see if you guys agree with me. And a real quick word about and and or. Um, quick little side note, cool, before we come back to this. If I saw a job description and it said you have to be over 35 and you have to have five years experience and you have to uh, want be okay with relocating and you have to know how to speak uh, Portuguese and... Every time that sta another statement comes in, my pool of possible people does what? It's smaller. It's smaller and smaller. Okay, all the people who are only up to 34, they're like, shit. Right. And then mm -hmm. I can't speak Portuguese, shit. And then I, I, I don't want to relocate, shit. You know? <laughs> so you get smaller and smaller. So and is always going to make it smaller. See, and men and left-handed, it's only these specific people who did both. Or is like, ah, you could be over 35, or if you know how to speak Portuguese, I'll take you no matter how old you are, or if you are okay with lo relocating, because we're probably going to move and I want somebody right now. <laughs> so I always think of that as the desperate job ad. Right? We need somebody. <laughs> but you don't see many of those nowadays. So the or would take everybody here and everybody there. Just take them all. And in English, that's where we get a little freaked out, because if I say I want you and you and you and you, we're adding them all together and bringing it. That's in English. But in probability, it's descriptions. I need somebody who is taller than six foot, who, uh, I don't know, has, knows how to paint, who, you know, and this and that, and then I'm like really narrowing in on somebody specific, right? Mm -hmm. So the or, how many women are there? 26. So if I do this, 26 women plus 38 not left-handers, what have I done wrong? In fact, what do I get here? I get 64 divided by 45, which is one point something. So that's telling me right there, please, dear God, if you get an answer of 1.2 for probability, don't leave it alone. Say, try it, and you can't say, I don't know what I did wrong, but I know it should not be 1.2. Please, dear God. So I'll say greater than one, question mark, question mark. Oh, my God. It can't be greater than one, right? This tells you you did something wrong. So how many people did I count twice? Women. All the women who were not who were left handed were not left handed. I counted them twice, didn't I? I counted them here, 
and again in there. So I heard a few of you guys saying something nice. Just be smart. Don't double count them. I could do 26 plus 16 because that's all the not left-handers I haven't counted yet. Mm -hmm. Or you do officially by what we're going to see is the formula. You do 26 plus 38 minus whoever is this and that because they've been counted twice, right? Minus the 22 that I counted twice. But you don't have to do it like that, do you? See again? You don't have you can't do the twenty. You have two ways you can do it. And the and the other way is actually like the next step if I do thirty-eight minus twenty-two, isn't that sixteen? Yeah. Which is actually the way I heard some people say, just add the sixteen in. Don't do the twenty-two again, just add what you haven't added yet. That's smart. I like that. Yeah. Um, so basically you're adding men as well for Because they're included here, aren't they? You have to be a woman or, or a not left handed. Right? It's a very strange club. We let you in if you're a woman or if you're not left handed. We're just really scared of those left handed dudes. <laughs> right? But you're not counting women that are left handed. Yeah, the women who are left handed, oh, do we, yeah. do we, uh, <coughs> they're women, but the men who are left handed definitely didn't come in because they're exactly not what I would say it. we need there, right? And so this will be 42 out of 45. 93%? All right, maybe. Yes? How would you like us to round those uh, A couple places is good for now. Uh, when we get to chapter 6, we'll see that we'll go out to four decimal places because that's the way the chart gives it to us. But for right now, a couple places is fine. If you show me the work, show me the fraction you're building, and then show me the decimal you get, you should be fine. Just give me the decimal and it's wrong. I have no idea what you did wrong, so I've got to take more points off. Show me some work. Cool. So here's the thing going on with OR. Here's the formula for OR. Let me actually give you a little picture. Probably A or B. Have you guys ever seen a picture like this before? Yeah, it's a rec. Oh, no. Venn diagram, all right? Yeah. So this is just like the last problem. A could be women. B could be not left-handed. What would this middle part be then? Both. Whoever's both, right? And what's out here? Whoever's neither. So the probability of A or B wants to include A, wants to include B, but if I do that, I've counted this middle section twice. And then middle section is... Anybody who's A and B. So here's the official formula, and obviously this is one we're going to add to our formula sheet that we can bring to the test. Probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of any I double counted, right? So a quick little follow-up example that doesn't have a chart associated with it. I think last time we said... Nobody really had a problem with cards, right? We kind of built up the cards. There were four suits. Remember, um, four suits, 13 cards in each, so forth. Mm -hmm. So what's the probability that I pick out of a deck of cards, I pick a jack? I love it. There's four jacks, for each, one for each suit, out of 52 total cards, and one out of 13, bless you, which is whatever percent. What's the probability I pick a jack or an eight? And I think I did a problem like that when we first did this because that's not too bad. There are four jacks. There are four eights. How many total things are there that I'm looking for? Eight things. So you naturally added already when, you, when I asked you the or question, right? So or is basically add. Now, don't get confused. I could have put any card there, and it still would have been eight up here, right? I hate when I have a coincidence happen. Jack or something that's not a jack. There's eight out of 52 chance. Okay. And let's do this one. Let's probably get a jack or a club. How many jacks are there? Four. How many clubs are there? Thirteen. But if I do that, what's wrong? 
I added a specific card. What card did I add twice? Jack of clubs, right? So if I say all the jacks stand up and all the clubs stand up, the jack of clubs can't stand up twice. He like stands up taller or something. No, he's already stood up. I can't count him twice, right? So minus one, or just do plus 12 in the first place. Say, oh, there's 12 other clubs I haven't counted yet. Right? You can be smart about it. So then you get 16 out of 52, whatever the hell that is. Okay. Wait, um, say that one again, that last part. So four jacks, yes. 13 clubs, but if I add those together, I've added the jack of clubs twice. I added them once oh, here oh, and once there. You, you, That's why I have to subtract one of them off. So the jack and clubs, there's one card that's jack and clubs. The jack and clubs. Cool. How are we doing so far? I mean, that's or is basically and. You just have to subtract sometimes. Why did I not have to subtract anything here? Because hopefully there's no jacks that are also eights. If there are, I'm not going to play anything with you. Like, oh, I've got a jack now. No, screw that. <laughs> Show me all your cards. What's going on? Okay. Yes. Here? Yeah. So how many jacks are there? And how many eights are there? So how many total cards would work for me then if this is what I'm looking for? Eight cards would work for me. So I was hoping that this eight didn't throw us off. I could have put anything there that wasn't a jack. And it would have been the same answer because there's four of each. Cool. Okay. When, yeah. um, when you said that you simplify it tells you something different. Yes. For the, the last one, you get uh, four out of 13. The, the yeah, nine. not always. I, and I think I was careful. I said, I didn't say like always tells you something different. It often tells you something different. Okay. Whenever you got something where you have to adjust a little bit, it's obviously going to be a little bit weirder. Right? Whereas this one actually, this will reduce to 2 out of 13 because there's a jack and a 6 in every 13 cards. Yeah. So 2 out of 13 on average. But when you have to adjust it like this, yeah, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Probably jack and six would be, of course, what? Double. No, careful. How many cards? How many cards are jack and six? Zero. Jack. Oh, and oh. So think about that. You got to think about that as a description of somebody. So if I want to find somebody who's a a, a man or um, somebody who's given birth. Either one. All right, I can do that. But if I say I want to find a man and somebody's given birth, who, what person matches that description? <laughs> Nobody I know of, right? No matter what National Enquirer says. Have you ever seen the movie Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, <laughs> yes. My was so sensitive. Have you ever seen that movie? <laughs> so Jack and six, of course, is zero. Zero <coughs> percent. Because no card is a Jack and a six. Right. Which, again, is exactly why... I did not have to subtract anything off here because no, there's no cards that are jacks and sixes. There's nothing to subtract. There's nobody I double counted. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. So you, so you, hypothetically speaking, you can have a, 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 a homework like this. Yes. Oh, yes. In fact, looking directly in your homework here for a second, I'm kind of into section 4.3 now. Um, oh, let's see. That was 4-3. This is 4-3, exactly. Cool. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. They give you, like, on the bottom of page 157, they give you a problem a lot like that one. Like, the book kind of likes its problems, and so do I. So you can expect a problem like that from me on a test or a quiz. Right. Um, so they give you a whole little section with that. And on the same on the next page, the same thing. They give you another one of those. They love those chart problems. Um, so some definitions I have to fill in now. Yeah. Uh, like 17 through 32, basically. They're a lot like this chart problem up here. Right. Um, so here's a couple of definitions real quick. And I really hate that they're changing the words on me. I don't know why it makes me feel old. Like, holy crap. We use that word for so No. Um, but we have things that the book calls it disjoint. 
event. It's not this joint versus that joint, but this joint events. And what I used to call mutually exclusive events. Yeah. So I used to call it mutually exclusive events. They mutually exclude each other, right? So there are two things that cannot happen at the same time. We already saw an example of that. What did we see over here? Jack, Jack and Six. Jack. So Jack, event Jack and event Six are disjoint events because they don't join. They don't look like this. There are no Jackses that are all Jackses. That's good. Job. There's no Jacks that are also Sixes. Right? Um, I used to talk about cats and dogs, but then there was some stupid cartoon cat dog or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, so this is kind of hard, but, but ice creams and uh, lawn fertilizer. There are no ice creams. Oh, screw it, I can't wait. <laughs> Maybe you could put ice cream on a lawn, I don't know. <laughs> I think you guys get the idea. So when you see a problem, look on page uh, 156 at the bottom, it starts. Let's look at actually number six. If you conduct a poll and you select somebody who is Republican, that's event A. And event B is you select somebody who is a Democrat. Are those disjoint events or not disjoint? Yes. So the way you think about it is, is there anybody who could be both? Yes. Now think about it now. If you're, if you're, what do you have to do to be able to like vote in primaries and stuff? Yes. Don't you have to identify yourself as one, one or the other? Yeah. So if you identify yourself as a Republican, can you also identify yourself as a Democrat on those? No. Yeah. Right? So they are disjoint. They don't join. There's nobody who's in both. Whereas this question, randomly select a college graduate. This is a little bit of a bummer, but oh. Randomly select a college graduate. Randomly select someone who is homeless. Number 12, for example, right? Are they disjoint? Unfortunately not. There are lots of college graduates out there who are homeless. Right? None of you guys, hopefully. I'm always hopeful, but you never know how this. So, so you can think of somebody who graduated from college who would also be homeless. So there is somebody who would fit into both. That's how you attack those kind of problems, right? Is there something or someone who would fit both descriptions? Then it's not disjoint. They actually do join. If you can't think of anybody, they're disjoint. Right? For, for, for a problem like this, would you have to find numbers also? No, no. It's okay. just a definition question, really. Okay. Yeah. Are these disjoint or not? Yeah. I'm not asking you to go out and take a poll. <laughs> Homeless people, did you graduate from college? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, I think there was, oh. When I said earlier, um, remember they had the probably left-handed? What did this mean again? Not, not left-handed. Left this is officially called the complement of L, right? The complements. Because what would this be here? 100%, right? So I mean saying if you add the probably it's going to snow today to the probably it's not going to snow today, it's got to be 100% or else you somehow left something out, right? So probably is something plus probably a not that thing has to be 100. So if it's probably it's going to rain today is 5%, what's probably it's not going to rain? 95. You use that idea to get that, right? What idea? This idea. One or 100%, right, if you want to put it as a percentage. So that's a pretty simple idea. But if you see the word complement in there, they mean the opposite of that thing, right? So if I'm rolling a die and I'm looking for the probability I get a five, what's the complement of that? A what? Roll a die and I'm trying to get a five, what's the complement of that? What's the opposite of getting a five? Not getting a five. Not getting five. I love it. There you go. Don't get into all wells. One, two, three. No, no. Not five. That's it. That's all you got to do. Right? So there are two kinds of people in the world. Have you ever heard that? People who think there are two kinds of people in the world and people that don't. <laughs> so right there, everybody who doesn't should stop thinking that way. But, oh. um, okay, cool. Let me give you one more to do here. Look on the bottom of page 157. Uh, let's, actually, let's do this. I think it's a little more interesting. 
the very beginning of the chapter. This is page 137. And this actually is applicable to any tests that are done. Have you guys ever heard of false positives, false negatives, mm -hmm. right? And the problem is a lot of times people use the wrong probability and they get all freaked out. So if you get a positive result for something, some horrible something, that doesn't automatically mean you definitely have it because there's a chance, normally higher than you think, that the test was wrong. And they almost have to build that in for the test to be right a lot of the time, it's got to be wrong more <laughs> to catch more people. That's really how they have to build it in. So this is a good example of that. This is a, a positive result for lying, negative result for lying. Uh, they actually lied. They did not lie. Let's do that. So it's 15, 32, 42, and 9. Okay, so let me ask you a real couple quick questions. What's the probability somebody did not lie? Just do this on your own. Don't say it out loud. It's probably somebody uh, lied and it was a negative result. So the machine didn't catch them. They got away with it, right? Uh, and what's the probability that it was a positive result or, um, uh, or they lied? just to round that out. So do those three real quick. So hopefully you all see a really good first step would be to make those totals on the outside, right? with what I put up here. So I put the not lied in the lied category, but that's too bad for me. So just to make sure we can all do the nuts and bolts of putting these probabilities together. I actually flipped these two around. That's too bad, but what did you guys get for probability not lying? So what'd you set up here? Good. So always start me off there and then you do whatever so 52 something percent? Yeah. Okay. What's probably that lied, 
They lied, and it was a negative result. 30, 32 over 98. Good. And if you're going out of the book, again, I switched those titles, which I just love that I did that. But according to what I've got up here, B, they lied, and it was negative, so it'd be right there. All right? If you look in the book, though, the titles are different, so it's by fault. Right? But just to make sure we can all find it. So the way I've got it up on the board, lied and negative would be this. 32 out of 98. In the book, it would be, these are switched, so it would be 9 out of 98. Okay? Cool. I just hate when I do that. Uh, positive or lied. So if you do 57, that's for positive. What can you add to that that you still need? 32. Oh, or if you did the way the book is. Yeah. Cool. 89 out of 98 or 32. do it the way the book has it. Cool. All right. So those are not that evil, right? The, they really aren't, especially when they give it to you in a chart. Ands are always intersections. This one and that one, the number where they meet. Or you got to be careful. you got to subtract something off if you're not careful. Where are we at? How did you get the 32? 57 uh, positive or lied. Well, I've already counted these, so how many liars have I not counted yet? Those. Or I can do 57 plus 47 minus 15. Well, 47 minus 15 is, of course, 32. It's the same thing. Let me, let me actually, uh, this is what I normally start with this, but I, I kind of forgot about this. This is nifty, and there's enough people for this to work, and there's always a chance it won't work. So if it doesn't, that's too bad for me. But what do you think the chances that two people in here have the same birthday? Who's, who's heard of that before? Nobody. What do you think the chances are that two people in here have the same birthday? How many people? It's possible, but do you think it's likely? It's actually likely enough that I'm almost willing to put money on it. There's enough people in here for it to almost be definite. And people, the reason people think it's not is because you think of your own birthday and you say, well, who else is going to have my birthday? When actually it could be any birthday that two people could share. So there's a lot more options. Where are my January babies? So when I point at you, just tell me the day you were born, right? The, the number? 29th. 29th? Second. Second? Okay, not yet. Where are my February babies? All right. 27th? 18. 18? Not today. 29th today. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Lee, no, wait. Oh, 29th of this month, not February. I'm on February. Okay, cool. Where am I at? Where am I at? I thought you'd leave here, baby. And if you hear somebody say if your February birthday gets the... 6th? 23rd. 23rd. Okay, so no repeats there. How about January, March? <coughs> okay. 17th. 17th? 23rd. 23rd? 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 29th. 30th. 30th, 29th. I almost had it. 18th? 13th? Is somebody else the 13th? 9th. 9th. Not yet, huh? All right. Here we March. April. All right. 26. 26? 15? Oh. 5. 5. Any, no, anyway, uh, April? May. 19th. 19th? May? 29th. Uh, June. June? 25th. 25th? 4th? 21st? 21st? 3rd. <laughs> July, July. 21st. 21st. 22nd. 22nd. <laughs> Killing me. 17? 7. 7, sorry. 6. 17. What did you say? You said <laughs> August. I'm going to go through this, believe me. 29th? 24th? 25th. 25th. Uh, <laughs> September 21st. First. First. 10th. 10th. 27th. 27th. 10th. 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 <laughs> I should have put money down. <laughs> Something I'll just do it because I mean it's almost definite with a with a group this size. Mm -hmm. It's it's not definite. There's like a 20% chance that it won't be with a group this size. That's an 80% chance it will be. That's a good thing. And people normally say, there's no way. So I'm like, we put 20 bucks down there. So I make a decent little profit. I think it might be frowned on by the school, though. But take advantage of you guys. Ask a question. Yeah. Where did you get 57 from? Uh, from right there. 
Oh, okay. So positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha, yeah, yeah. Cool. But is that that's another example oh. of how we don't.